Hi, welcome to <clears throat> the lecture on natural language processing at the course, Big Ideas in Artificial Intelligence. I'm Kyung Hyun Jo. I'm an associate professor of computer science and data science at NYU. Before we start our lecture on natural language processing, let's think about intelligence a bit. The first thing that we need to think about intelligence is that it is not a dichotomy. That is, it's not that one organism is intelligent while all the others are not. It's more of a continuum. Let's imagine this. We all believe and we all agree that humans are intelligent. Now, can we agree that all the mammals, in particular mammals on the ground, are intelligent? Perhaps. But if you think about it, you must have heard about stories of how intelligent elephants are. Okay, so perhaps the mammals are intelligent, but just not as intelligent as we humans are. Then how about reptiles? How about its <clears throat> close relative dinosaurs? Were they intelligent? I guess so. In particular, if you think about one of the living fossil that is alligators, they seem to be quite intelligent in their hunting behavior. Okay, so then how about insects? Are insects intelligent? Let's consider bees. Bees are definitely intelligent. They are able to convey the location of flowers miles, miles away from their home to their colleagues in the beehive back home. So that does seem like the knowledge that only an intelligent or that does seem like a behavior that only an intelligent species may possess. But then how about plants? Are plants intelligent? Probably not. Or maybe you notice that it becomes quite confusing what it means for some things not, not only biological things, but some things to be intelligent. However, one thing that does set humans, us, apart from all the other potentially intelligent beings is language. And human language, the language that we use effortlessly is unlike any language that is spoken by non-human animals. Or of course, you can count all those chemical signals that microorganisms use as well. And even then, our language, the human language is very, very exceptional. There are a number of things that sets our language apart from all the other forms of communication. The first is that it is compositional or in other words, productive. According to the compositionality section in Stanford Encyclopedia of philosophy, it says that the language is compositional if meaningful expressions build up from other meaningful expressions. And this allows us to effectively produce infinite variety of things we can express using language. Second, it is open-ended. New words and sentences are created over time. That is our language is not a static entity. It evolves over time and allows us to cope with the non-stationary nature, that is the ever-changing nature of the environment in which we live. Third, it is abstract. We can use language in order to refer to not only the concrete things that exist, that we can see or sense, but also to abstract concepts, as well as the hypothetical scenarios that have never happened and will not happen. Think about democracy. It is a concept, we have a word for it, there is a name for it, but still, this is not a kind of thing that we can see ourselves, sense ourselves, or touch it. So <clears throat> before we talk about language a bit further, let's think quickly about where intelligence comes from. So what do we mean by we are intelligent? What do we mean by we have knowledge that allows us to act or behave intelligently. And one thing we realize is that it's the experience. 
that gives a rise to intelligence. Think about this question. How do we know things? We often know what things are by interacting with them. We see them, we hear them, we touch them, and we taste them. Then we ask the second question. How do we learn skills? What, is, what does it mean for us to know the skills so that we can behave in a particular way that allows us to survive in this environment? And the answer is that by trying them out. We learn to walk by try to walk. We, run to, we learn to run by trying to run. Some of us, not me, know how to backflip, but that also requires you to try it out. Cooking, a similar thing. Of course, you can always look at the recipe, but you often need to have tried cooking multiple times in order to know how to cook or learn the skill of cooking. But then you ask yourself, those two answers sounded reasonable, but one more second of thinking gives you a doubt about it. What is that? Why is that? Let me ask you one question. Have you ever been to Asian Greece yourself? No one who is listening to this lecture can answer yes to this question. It's impossible. It's just physically impossible. However, somehow, almost every one of us has heard of, if not, is very, very familiar with Greek mythology. That's interesting. Then let's be a bit realistic. And then let me ask you a bit simpler question. Have you been to Antarctica yourself? There may be a few of you who have been to Antarctica or nearby, but it's unlikely that the majority of us have ever set our foot on Antarctica ourselves. But somehow, almost all of us, if not all of us know penguins live there and that they do look like gentlemen in tuxedo. That's really interesting. We've never been to Antarctica, but we know what lives in Antarctica. We've never been to Asian Greece, but we know what kind of beliefs people had back then in Asian Greece. What this implies, or the from this observation, what we now can say with the certainty is that this is what sets us apart from many other animals or the non-human species that are potentially intelligent. That is, this use of sophisticated language allows us to expand the horizon of experience. So experience is not anymore the thing that we have to sense ourselves or we have to try ourselves. We can rely on written or spoken record in order to know what happened far back in time. We can know about what happens far away from where we live and from the place where we've never been to by listening to others who have been there. In other words, language is the key to intelligence. And in particular for the artificial intelligence, language is going to serve as the key because artificial intelligence cannot or does not have many generations over which it can accumulate experience. We need to provide the artificial intelligence system with our experience that have accumulated in the form of language. Once more, language expands the horizon of experience both spatially as well as temporally. And this makes studying and researching natural language, that is human language, in the context of artificial intelligence, very, very interesting. And this ends the first part of the lecture. From the second part, we're going to go a bit further or deeper into what it means to build an AI system that can deal with natural language.